little spacious skies greet us today. The Bell Tower on the Chapel Hill campus of the University of North Carolina overlooking beautiful Keenan Stadium. And it's here that the nine-time Atlanta Coast Conference champion Florida State Seminoles arrive to take on North Carolina. An emotional setting today for the Seminoles and the Tar Heels. Carolina set to kick it away today. For Florida State, you saw a moment ago, Crow Thorpe, the freshman from Tallahassee, along with Greg Tony, deep to return for FSU. The ball on the tee, Jeff Reed puts his foot into it, and this will be Thorpe if he elects to return it. Well, he won't. Downing it a yard deep into the end zone. Florida State on offense for the first time today. Ranked fifth in the land, and the top offense in terms of point production through the first couple of games of the year. Victories over Duke, 55 points there, and 29 late on Alabama-Birmingham. Pretty hard-fought game back in Doak Campbell that uh, this man and Chris Ricks had a field day at the Atlantic Coast Conference Rookie of the Week for a 256-yard passing performance at the expense of the Blazers. And again, as we talked in the opening of the show, more of the FSU game plan being put in in order to expand the options and the things that Ricks can do from that quarterback position. Set the offensive starters and defensive starters for you in a moment. The North Carolina native and Nick Maddox out across the 20 to the 21. He'll be a marked young man this afternoon from Kannapolis, North Carolina is Nick Maddox and for Tar Heel fans he's the one that got away the one they wanted most three years ago that elected to sign at Florida State coming back home to play and there you see him join uh, McCray Andrew Bell Javon Walker and Patrick Hughes Florida State opening with two tight ends Williams Brown Mirabeau Holland and Williams pay attention to the two bookends Brett and Todd they will be busy this evening second down to eight Mater on the move they run Maddox to the other side can't find a gap. Ran into Brett Williams and is swarmed under. Mercita Perry, the Sam linebacker, the senior, with the stop. And this is the first game Perry's been able to play. He was redshirted last year because of an ankle, and he's at that Sam linebacker position that you mentioned. They're real high on him. First two carries, Nick's netted about half a yard loss. Mercita Perry, a senior. Quincy Monk, a senior, too. There, Julius Peppers, of course, topping that list with Will Chapman, Ryan Sims, Joey Evans. Quincy Monk and David Thornton, their leading tackler. Waddell, the corner, a junior, has exceptional speed. Seminoles will run it out of there, and look at that. Shred him. Well, they got within a couple of yards of the first down, but uh, not enough on third down. Thornton on the stop there, and Florida State will kick it. Carolina's defense pretty impressive on the initial series. Well, and it's not a bad defense. They're giving up 286 yards per game, and they've been victimized. This defense has, as you see Chris, a little disgusted on the sidelines. They've been victimized, Paul, because the North Carolina offense has turned the ball over so many times. The punt to Bosley Allen from Gwaltney slips the first tackle. Out across the 30 and the sidelines to midfield. A flag in behind him, however as he's hauled down from behind at the 39-yard line by Florida State's Allen Augustin. Bryant McFadden missed it downfield. That was about a 30-yard mistake on the tackling error. And now, well, another look here at the return of uh, Bosley Allen. Both shooters in good position. We do have flags all over the place. Carolina was very late getting lined up in their punt return. And then, of course, we'll have an either illegal block or a clip on the return and bring everything back. But what an emotional start. One penalty on the flag. We have an illegal block in the back on the return team. Ten yards, first down. Atlantic Coast Conference crew today, uh, the referee is Ron Cherry. A microcosm of the first month of this season for, for North Carolina, they would have been at the Florida State 39. Well, if you just go back and watch tape or you were uh, just watching North Carolina on TV as they were playing, as we mentioned, as you see Ronald Curry come out, he's going to lead them at least the first two series, we've been told. It's an offense that just hasn't performed well. The four-year starter at quarterback, who's closing in on several Carolina career records, turns the total offense and pass completions. Curry. Under center, Corey Bailey starts in motion. 
And on the ground, with a bit of running room for Andre Williams, the sophomore running back. Abdul Howard up from the rover position to cut him down at the legs. Curry with Andre Williams behind him. Tailback has been uh, operation by committee as you take a look at North Carolina's starting quarterback who has really struggled this year. So far, he's yet to throw a touchdown pass. Quite the contrary, he's thrown four interceptions so far this year. It's his completion percentage is less than 40. Is that right? Less than 35. See what he does here against the grain. And now pressure. Darnell Dockett gets chase. He throws. And it's dropped at midfield. Defensive back for Florida State, Malcolm Tatum. Had the wide receiver, Bosley Allen, curl in front of him. That was a very catchable ball. And now it's third down. That was not Curry's fault. The thing that is so scary to Mickey Andrews and the Florida State defensive staff was illustrated right there. Curry can work his way out of position and still do del deliver the ball with a great deal of accuracy. Uh, now forced to operate out of the gun. Florida State brings four and Curry's going airborne upstairs for Allen and that wasn't close to being complete. However, in the backfield, Curry got knocked down and that might be roughing the passer. I believe so holding. Jackson. Holding is the preliminary oh. call. Carolina's coming off the field as if it is against them. Curry was down. Alonzo Jackson standing over him. And there's John Bunning on. Should be three big mistakes initially. Very much so. Two penalties. <laughs> on the offense, penalty of the climb. And then the drop pass by Boz Allen. I, he should be knocking on the door for the first score of the day. And it's been that's the microcosm of what this North Carolina season has been all about. John Bunning, eight years in the National Football League. You recall he played for Dick Vermeil, Super Bowl team with the Philadelphia Eagles. A high snap for John Lafferty. And the senior kicks it to Nick Maddox from his 30. He ran into a teammate of Rufus Brown. Comes to the side. Good special teams hustle. The wrestling down by Madison Hedgecock. Pause in the action. No score. Just underway on a gorgeous Saturday in Keenan Stadium today. Florida State's second possession of this opening quarter. Very first game in the ACC today. Played at high noon. Ricks to hand off to Greg Jones. Dipping to find the corner. And he does for five. Greg Jones, the second Seminole running back. Replacing Nick Maddox on the second series. This is a regular rotation. They'll get Greg in there every other series, every third series. They've, they've nicknamed them Paul Thunder and Lightning. I like that. Want to guess which one's Thunder? <laughs> I would say it's Greg Jones. He has some pop to him. Watch him lower his shoulder. And he's not afraid to hit you, and he is quite speedy to be carrying around 245 pounds. He's got 230 pounds in front of him. That's William McCray, his first carry. Stood up by Will Chapman, the defensive tackle. A sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky, number 91. He's a 275. He's got some size in the interior. Both Sims and Chapman uh, do have the size to play in there. And they got Joey Evans, of course, Peppers on the outside. Again, a defense call that has performed well, but has not gotten any support from their offense. Against the likes of Oklahoma, Maryland, and Texas, North Carolina has only surrendered four drives all year, but their offense has betrayed them. Florida State needs four. Jones, Hendon, will not get it. Julius Peppers, the first man to it. Martin as well, and that is consecutive stops for that Carolina Blue D. We've seen Florida State come with six consecutive running plays in their first two series. Again, Jeff Bowden and company wanting to establish the run, but it is just so hard to do. Thornton on a little bit of a stunt turns that back inside and a lot of help. Nice punt by Chance Qualton. Here is Boz to the 30. <laughs> what a hit laid on him by Brian Sawyer, the man that snapped the football. 
That was a crack that resounded around Keenan Stadium. Now, he's not supposed to get down there, is he? Oh, man. This is the guy, the long snapper. He's a sophomore, but he did it all of last year. He's going to get a little, little knock right here. Hello. That's at a full head of steam, and they're going in opposite directions at full throttle. Huh? Yeah, something about mass and weight, and all, yeah, somebody's going to get hurt. The Florida State Physics Department could tell us. Cornell, Georgia. Best hit of the game so far. Curry remains the quarterback on first down. So Jackson, the right end, wrapping up Andre Williams. For Alonzo Jackson today, Keith, he moves from the left side to the right side of that defensive front. What difference does it make? Well, it doesn't make that big a difference. It's just something you're comfortable with. But Zoe is going to anchor that defensive front that has the responsibility of containing Curry and or Durant when they get outside. And we were sitting uh, around visiting last night with uh, Coach Jim Gladden, and he is real high on Zoe. He has been very pleased with what he's seen out of Alonzo uh, during camp. North Carolina offensively trying to get packages and then they have the right receivers in place. So they burn their first time out. That gives us an opportunity to set for you uh, the Carolina offense. We've already seen Andre Williams and Madison Hitchcock with the special team stop. Boz Allen, Corey Bailey, and the tight end and Doug Brown. Their tight ends have only cut one pass collectively. Greg Wolfter, Jupiter Wilson, Adam Metz, Jeb Terry. And Willie McNeil on what is being called the youngest offensive line in the history of Carolina football. Wonzo Jackson changing to the right side. Kevin Emanuel on the left with Dockett and Womble on the inside for Mickey Andrews. Kendall Pope is blossoming. Michael Bulware right in the middle of the monster. Bradley Jennings and uh, Malcolm Tatum. Chris Hope, Abdul Howard, and Stanford Samuels. Florida State has but... One interception for Mickey so far through two games, and it belongs to Tatum. And that's something that he worked on during these two weeks, is getting his defensive backs closer to the ball. Plenty of deflections, but opportunities where the DBs have had to actually make the interception, they have not. Good way of counterbalancing offenses that go without a huddle. So Very much so. It's much easier to get your call in because uh -huh. it doesn't have to be repeated. Hedgecock is the fullback in front of Andre Williams. A second down. Needing a dozen. Curry. Now he can run. Quite an athlete. The pressure's coming. He's back at the 15. Throws on the run. Just unloaded it. And ends up five yards into his own bench. Dockett got there. Jennings got there. You get hurt when you spill into all the people standing around on the sideline. Well, and, and actually a good job by Michael Bolwer not to get an illegal hit out of bounds. Pulled off a of Curry over there on the sideline. Good heads up play. You're going to see it developing from the back. And, and one of the things, again, that uh, the staff was most concerned with was containing Curry when he gets outside. You're going to see Alonjo Jackson on the right side pinch in, and then a linebacker is going to scoot outside. Right there, Bolware. He's got contain, and Ron just runs right by him. Curry yet to complete a pass. Now he's going to tuck it and take off. Spins up to the 35-yard line. That appeared to be a designed play. Bradley Jennings, Kendall Pope on this stop, and it's fourth down. Kind of way the season's gone so far. You see the uh, average per carry there of 0.5. Very uncharacteristic of Ronald Curry over his career. It's just been a struggle, folks. It just, for whatever multitude of reasons, hasn't come together for number one. John Lafferty hit this very well to Nick Maddox. An obvious clip in the open field, and then Maddox is leveled on a big shot by David Thornton. So Florida State, with Maddox tackled at the 19, this should cost Florida State half the distance to the goal on the Knowles' first penalty today. I believe it was number eight, Bryant McFadden. This is just a stupid play, Brian. You can't, you've got no chance to do anything. Just pull up and twiddle your thumbs. Don't cost your team a, a yardage like this and make them start inside the 10. And I guarantee well, you, Mickey's in his ear over on the corner. In the back on the return team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, divide 19 by two. There's Mickey with uh, a little discussion with Brian. 
Let's check in with Tom Block. Tommy, but it won't be that one. I think Tom got his ears burned. <laughs> Rick's back up to his own goal line. Trying to get back to the 10 yard line is Nick Maddox, the most heralded high school running back in the history of prep football in North Carolina for A.L. Brown High School in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Great play this time by number 30, David Thornton. Watch him read right back outside and get in the nick and trip him up. Thornton leads this North Carolina club in tackles with 42 coming into this afternoon. Double digit tackles in every game so far. Chad Mater is the fullback leading the way. Trying to get a check. And there was Julius Peppers again. Mater went past him while Peppers was locked up. Peppers shredded the blocker and made the stop. Very stingy run-oriented defense Carolina has. Only given up about 142, 143 yards a game. Florida State choosing to continue to pound. This is the third time we've seen the sweep to the left side. Twice with Nick and once with Jones. Eight consecutive running plays for Florida State on these three series. Chris Ricks yet to attempt to pass. Blitz coming. He's going upstairs here and going deep. Contact with Atrus Bells at midfield. He wants a flag. It's not coming. And Florida State's without a first down. Nice downfield coverage. Ricks laid the ball up, giving Bell an opportunity to come back to it. But nice coverage, and Florida State's forced to punt. He had to throw the ball over 50 yards just to get it to midfield. And now Gwaltney with Sawyer snapping from his own end zone. A line drive. Boz Allen. Pop one already today. Brought back once already this year. And look at the field position for the Tar Heel. At the 7 34 yard line. Augustine, his second special team stop, but in the early going. North Carolina freshman Darian Durant in his Keenan Stadium debut checks in for Ronald Curry under center in Florence, South Carolina. Chesley Borders in motion. They'll keep it on the ground on first down. Andre Williams stopped by Charles Howard, who is healthy again. So Darian Durant inserted here for John Bunning wants to see if he can spark Carolina early in this game. Just a freshman is Durant, but numbers are very good. 27 of 50, that's a 54% completion record. Right under 300 yards. He has thrown three interceptions, but he's backed that up with two touchdown passes. Again, Andre Williams, if you're bunning, and with his first year staff, it includes a veteran offensive coordinator in Gary Tranquil, who's been in this profession for 30 years, former head coach at Navy. With a young quarterback or a troubled offense on a young offensive line, you aren't going to do anything that's less than conservative, are you? Especially with this type of field position. Carolina has had field position all first quarter, forcing Florida State to stay more on the ground than they wanted to offensively. But now's the time when you get this type of field position, you have to do something with it. Carolina third and 14. Out of the gun for Durant. Blitz coming. Pope was blitzing. What a laser that was. Got him to the 32 yard line. Corey Bailey, a tough catch in front of Malcolm Tatum. But there was velocity on that outright by Darian Durant. Well, Durant goes about 230 pounds, 225 pounds. Got an absolute rifle for an arm. Watch him release this. Nice coverage by Florida State. And certainly the route much too short in order to gain the first down by Corey Bailey. But you get a, a little inkling about what the future of Carolina football might be offensively when Darian's in there. All right, Carolina has neither attempted nor made a field goal in three previous games. This would be a 53-yard field goal by Jeff Reed, the senior. One of the finest kickers in the league. He is capable from this distance. It'll be close, but it's off to the right. He had the distance to Jeff Reed. So the great field position, Tom Block, all for naught, and we are still Chris Winkie at the helm. Florida State laid 63 on North Carolina and Doak and won 63 to 14. Play action. 
Lincoln still looking for a receiver. Now throws deep, but jump ball incomplete. Thrown toward Javon Walker. First pass thrown in his direction downfield at the 20 yard line. And defensive pressure up front by Carolina on Ricks. And Carolina is capable of bringing that pressure. Well, Play action fake. Chris rolls back to his left, throws this ball across his body, did not plant and throw. Therefore, the ball was underthrown. And that's one of the things, again, that quarterback coach Daryl Dickey has been working with Chris on. It's footwork, fundamentals. Get yourself under control, get your weight moving forward, and throw off that foot. Had to complete a pass. Now Greg Jones, the 41-yard line. And once again, Florida State will face third down. North Carolina indeed humiliated a year ago in Carl Torbush's final season of three for North Carolina. Their worst loss since 1969. And the most points North Carolina had ever surrendered in an ACC game. Hoping for payback today, Florida State, as you see, has never lost to North Carolina. Been tied once. Blitz on. Ricks. The hook, Atrus Bell, has the first down at midfield. He snared that in his gloves. Billy D. Greenwood in coverage. Nearly popped out the backside, too. I think he got the backside, the tail end of that football kick. Nice delivery from Ricks that time, stepping and throwing. 16th consecutive game with a catch for Atrus. Now that he's brought in the first one. Nice delivery by Chris. As you mentioned, almost bobbled, slightly bobbled by Atrus, but Florida State converts its first four, first down. And finally, finally gets into Carolina territory. Obviously, Atru's hamstring is okay. Senior captain, a gain of 10. First Rick's completion. Steps up. Green grass. Bobbles the ball. Carolina has fallen on it at the 38-yard line. Was hit, and Joey Evans has the football. I think the officials are going to talk about it. They are going to award the ball to Carolina. One of the dangers and one of the things that's been talked with Chris all about is rolling out and tucking the, uh, carrying the ball is to tuck the ball if you're not going to slide. Five-step drop, good pressure up the middle. Chris is flushed. He gets outside. You see him. He does fumble the thumb of the ball very clearly. Nice call by the officials. Another look at it from the backside. Watch it come out of his arm right there. See, he's trying to grab it, trying to grab it. Clearly a fumble. Nice camera work, guys. North Carolina courts what was going to be Florida State's most successful drive. Only the fourth turnover North Carolina has forced this season. Back to business for Darian Durant. Inside get Williams off the counter. And Williams for about four. He had a career best day to the sophomore in Austin, Texas, when they faced Mac Brown, the former Carolina coach. He went for 50 yards in that game and also scored a touchdown to the sophomore. But because of that inexperienced offensive line, look at his average call, only a little over two and a half yards per carry. And that's a direct reflection of the inexperience up front. They'll get better as they play, and we're seeing the, the fruits of that early tough schedule here in the first quarter. Williams with a gap on the left side of first down to midfield. They blew out the left side of Florida State. That young offensive line, Greg Wolf through the left tackle, Jupiter Wilson, a young sophomore. They're both sophomores on that side. What a hole. Well, they crashed. Step. Florida State was crashing the interior pinching, and they just caved in everybody down inside. Abdul Howard had to come up from his safety position. Tied for the team lead coming into today's contest with 19 stops. Senior, his first year as a starter. That motion for Carolina prior to the snap. And Jeff Womble pointing. Looked like Willie McNeil, number 76, the right tackle. Jeb Terry over there, 77 jump. Carolina says it's against Florida State. Ron Cherry again. Offside. Defense. Womble, five yards. Still, it's down. I think what Womble, what Jeff was talking about is that the center, Adam Metz, did something with the football. That caused him to get a little anxious. That'll be the second penalty against Florida State. Womble, now spotted at the 44. 
side. Sam Aiken. Well defended off the misdirection. Chris Holt. All Atlantic Coast Conference free safety was sitting on him. That is a play that if you find a crease, you can run a long time. That, that's a make it or break it play. You're either going to do very poorly or you're going to bust it for a while. So many bodies in there. Watch working from quarterback goes to your right, and then they come back to the left with a pulling guard. He actually gets tripped up by his own purse, own lineman right there. Florida State, a little fortunate. Bobby Bowden might put that one to pen and paper. Uh, get on the left side, Williams to the 32-yard line. Carolina's found something on the left side early. <laughs> doing a great job again they're going to pull a guard and goes right in behind him does Williams and he's certainly not showing the propensity to only gain about 2.7 per carry on this afternoon well he gained 10 there eight on the previous work off the left side he's going against the top run defense in the ACC Florida State third and total defense and a freshman in Jock Lewis his first carry and his Tar Heel career. One of the uh, great runners in North Carolina history as well, kind of in the Maddox tradition. The plan was to redshirt Jock Lewis, number 20, but they have struggled so much with Williams and Parker. He's playing today. Nice isolation action. He breaks it back to his right. Florida State caves it in. You know, Lewis was, as you mentioned, Paul, expected to be redshirted, but Willie Parker has a, actually turned his ankle this week in practice. And, they're deciding and going ahead and using the freshman Lewis. Out of the backfield, he holds on to it. To the 27-yard line. I'm sure he has some nerves today. Butterflies the size of condors. <laughs> well, well it, he's got the credentials. Last year, as you mentioned, he rushed for 2,652 yards toward 32 touchdowns. Bobbles this one just a little bit. Rufus Brown, number seven, is up to make the tackle. But again, North Carolina with, a, with at least a manageable third and five, third and a long, short six. Less than two minutes remaining in a scoreless first quarter, and Carolina is driving on Florida State. Sam Aiken in motion. Durant, it was tipped. Aiken holds it and has the first down at the 20-yard line. tackle of Chris Hope just enough to earn the first. What a tremendous effort. Nice route by Aiken. A great read by Chris Hope as you see Pope on the on, on the blitz. But then a better effort by Aiken to get away from him knowing where he needed to go in order to convert that first down. Williams and Hedgecock stacked in the eye. Durant throws the fake for Allen. Shielded out of bounds. Incomplete by Malcolm Tatum. That's exactly how you coach it. Malcolm doing it perfectly. You want to make sure you get body position where the receiver's got to go through you to either get to the ball or to continue the route. Totally legal play. Tatum positions himself well. Left-hand side of your screen. It'll come in the frame here at the end. Watch the position by Tatum. Just drives Allen right out of bounds. Steve Robinson, Matt Doherty would tell you that's a screen. A moving screen. <laughs> Is it? The current drive, ninth play coming. Good look at effort there. Play action to Williams this time. Garrett with all the time in the world. Oh, no. Wide open Aiken. Hurling for the pylon. Touchdown, Carolina. of the first quarter as Carolina is taking it to fifth rank Florida State and leads seven to nothing in Keenan. Reed with 
the kickoff. Greg Tony on the uh, short return, stumbling forward to the 17 yard line. Check in with Tom. Hey, thanks, Paul. We are all aware, of course, that in the last couple of weeks, we realized that in the big picture, sports is not very significant. Florida State now sporting the American flags on their back of their helmets, and this will be here for the remainder of the season in light of the recent tragedies at the Pentagon and in New York City. Guys? North Carolina, two. Oh, glory on its helmet. A glorious start for North Carolina, a struggle for Florida State, and Chris Ray. Settling down, and he has the good-looking completion to the far side. Javon Walker with his first catch. Second-leading receiver in the Atlantic Coast Conference gets his hands on the football for the first time. They gain a dozen and earn the first. Walker with a great effort two weeks ago against UAB. Three catches for 104 yards. Gets his first reception of the afternoon here in Keenan. Rick's facing adversity for the first time in his career, trailing by a touchdown on the road. Maddox out to the 35-yard line. I recall the debut that Maddox had, well, his return to North Carolina when he raced 51 yards for a score against Duke. That was his first touchdown. And he had a touchdown reception, too, if I remember correctly. Nick works real well in between the tackles. Nice block by McCray up front. He slides off to the right, picks up another three or four yards. This is the type of situation Florida State likes. Second and five. Hit in the backfield. Gets away. Shy of the first down, though. Mercida Perry with penetration. The fifth-year Sam linebacker. They have a Sam, a Mike, and a Will. That was a sudden Sam in the backfield. And all three of those linebackers, Perry, Monk, and Thornton, are seniors. They're the, they're the dominant part of that North Carolina defense. They're very smart. You say Wilford Brown, Wilford Brown pull out on a trap play with just too many baby blue jerseys around. Good effort to get close to the first down by Nick. But quarter will run out. And Florida State finds itself behind. From Caden, Florida State Football on Sunshine is brought to you by Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. You could use a good milkshake. It's hot up here. <laughs> it's very hot today. Hot under the collar, Chris Rex, his team trails by a touchdown. We enter the second quarter. Paul Kennedy, Keith Jones, along with Tom Block on the sideline. Now recall Florida State's first trip to this state a month ago to face Duke. It trailed, a touchdown entering the second quarter, and then exploded. Yeah, for 31, the expense of the Duke Blue Devils were in great shape by halftime. It's been a stop and start start to this game for Chris Ricks. Up for Florida State to get more into their play action passing routine, Paul, and 15, 18 yard routes. Those are the types of things they want to get Ricks more involved in. Insert two tight ends in this formation to open it and run. Hand off to the William McCray off the right side, the senior from Jacksonville. Another tackle for Quincy Monk. Monk number 41 centers the middle of that, as we mentioned, senior linebacking core. He calls the plays, calls the signals. Second on the team in tackles coming in this afternoon. They pick up the first down, running uh, hard inside McCray. From the 42. Floated downfield and incomplete intended for Patrick Hughes to tie it in. 35-yard line with the linebacker Perry on him. Hughes is a big target at 6-5. Could make the catch. Well, that's what I was talking about previously. Of course, they went to McCray on that third and short yardage to convert the first down. But play action, looking for the tight end. Just a little bit overthrown, but good coverage by Perry matched up against Hughes. Does that send a message that Bobby Bowden has seen Mercita Perry staying close off play action? And, uh, they thought they could slip the tight end behind it. Certainly they were hoping Perry would bite on that play action fake and maybe get a little bit behind. And blitzing now. And it's Maddox against that blitz, fighting for and in fact pushed for it by the backside tackle of Quincy Monk. Errol Hood there as well. So it appears that Nick Maddox 
is loosening up and running with more effectiveness now. That was his eighth carry. He's rushed for close to 30 yards early. Well, another thing that it shows is Florida State's offensive line getting a little better handle on what this Carolina defensive line and linebacker core is able to do. And, of course, there's the, the lightning of the thunder and lightning. Nick, uh, very close to 10 touches already here as we're early in the second quarter. Florida State beginning to mount something here on the Carolina side of midfield. And pushed back by the front. Gang tackling Peppers Chapman. There's number 49 along with 28, Billy D. Greenwood. The state has to kick it away. Well, uh, coaching staff, Bobby Bowden in particular, very, very leery of Peppers. So the all-ACC defensive end, the final four participant as well. What a power inside player he was for Bill Guthridge, Carolina, when they went to the final four a couple of years ago. Chance Gwaltney with a 53-yard punt earlier. This one he hangs very, very high. Fair catch called for and made by Michael Waddell at the 14-yard line. Carolina with the lead and the football following the Gwaltney punt. 7 to nothing target down, and there is Jeff Bowden, the Seminole offensive coordinator, on the sidelines with his dad. And as you were saying, Keith, widening the playbook each and every week now for a freshman quarterback. And, and one of the interesting things about Jeff is probably one of the most computer literate assistant coaches in, in, in college football. Has everything on his laptop, uh, sparingly <laughs> reveals it and shows us to us types, but uh, does a great job of getting things prepared. He's learning how to call plays. Daryl Dickey's upstairs. He'll relay down formations or personnel, and Jeff will make the call. He's working into the position. Uh, and he's learning a, a tough road here in Keenan on a, on a bright Saturday afternoon. So Chris Ricks, a freshman from Santa Margarita, California. Resounds like a beautiful place. Rancho High School there. 90 yards of total offense so far. And they need seven and a half to hold on to the football at midfield. Carolina fans stir. Rex Pressure. Now he'll take off. For the first down, it'll be close. What did Coach Bowden tell him? If you see grass, go. This well, time he did. And particularly on third down, you've got to be able to, to sustain drives. That time, good pressure by UNC from the outside. But again, Rick shows his athletic ability. Nice spot of the ball, good effort by Chris. Again, UNC comes with four-man rush. Chris works outside, brings the ball down, good downfield blocking, help out by Carver Donaldson, and then he dives just past the little marker that they lay down in front of the, front of the first down stake. I'm just a little disappointed, though. I'm heartbroken he didn't somersault. <laughs> I think that's out of the playbook now. Really. First down, keeps it going, bobbles the shotgun snap. May have to run again. Green grass, first down, sliding safely. What is that? Yard line. What is that? What just happened? Oh, he can slide. How many times do you think Jeff Bowden and Bobby Bowden screamed in his ear hole? No, I think Bobby was out showing him how. I think Bobby would sprint just a little bit and get down like this. Again, good pressure by the ends for UNC, Evans and Peppers. And then up the middle, number 91, Chapman. A lot of green grass, and Ricks does the very wise thing. He's safe at second. First down, Florida State. A 15-yard gain. He's Florida State's leading rusher today. 32 yards. Two better than that. Oh. Two falls and loses the football, and Carolina has recovered. Carolina has pounced on it. Isaac Morick. Bad exchange right now. Ground level look. Nick has got to learn. He wants to carry that ball in his left arm so much. Watch again. He doesn't get his right arm up where he has a pocket to slide it in there like he should. Another look at it. Got to get that right arm up, get that elbow elevated, 
put that left arm underneath so there's a pocket in there for Ricks to put the football. Off the turnover. On first down. And Carolina uh, keeps it on the ground and Andre Williams. So let's check in and see what Tom has. Guys, you know, uh, one of the reasons Carolina's 0-3 is the schedule they played. Another reason, they've been terrible in turnover margin, 112th in the country this year. They turned it over four times last year at FSU, and that was a big reason why they got hammered. But if you look at what's happened today, Carolina's holding on to the football, and FSU has turned it over twice, and all of a sudden, Carolina's got the lead, guys. On a fumble by Chris Ricks. On by Maddox. And prior to the Chris Ricks fumble, Florida State hadn't fumbled in about 225 rushes. Now Curry, the athleticism that Keith told you about, all the way down to the 40-yard line. He raced past Florida State's defense. Chris Hope had the angle on him to the sideline. He got a flag way back in the backfield, back at the 18-yard line. They're going to bring this one all the way back. This is just the way it's been for Ronald Curry, Paul. Unbelievable. This will be from the point he reached to where the ball now will have to be spotted in excess of a 40-yard penalty. On the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, replay second down. See if we can get a look at it right here at the tail end. Doesn't look like anything. It's up at the top, up at the top. Takedown. Takedown, number 94, O.J. Daxon, as we run it back. Takedown right up at the top, working from the right to the left by the offensive tackle. Can't get his number but either McNeil or Wolfter. It would have been Wolfter on that side. Should have been. Ronald Curry's got to be thinking, what else can go wrong? From the shotgun now, the ball is spotted at the 19. Williams. Ben Pat by Kendall Pope, Michael Bulwer, the two linebackers. Joe Kynes, who tutors the linebackers, said that Kendall Pope is blossoming, and he is Florida State's leading tackler as we enter the third week of the season. 19 stops coming into this afternoon, does Pope. And one of the things that Coach Kynes likes most about him is he knows how to get into position, Paul, but he's also a football player. He's got just great instincts about getting around the football, and he'll deliver a shot when he gets there. Halfway through the second quarter, seven minutes to go. On third down for Boz Allen, who leaps and can't make the catch. The 45, it was underthrown. Stanford Samuels was covering for Florida State. And the punting unit will come up. Without the holding call, Carolina would be uh, in possession on the Florida State side of the field. They're going to give it up, hoping the defense off. When you talk about coaching staffs getting into a Kynes collaring ball, 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 ball. That's the alert to the defensive back to get his head around and find the football. P.K. Sam, nowhere to go. Immediately drop on the special teams hustle of Dexter Reed. Florida State with the ball at its own 44-yard line, less than seven minutes away from halftime, trailing by seven. In stadium, the home of the Tar Heels today, resplendent in Carolina blue. And in North Carolina's home debut, Tar Heel fans with a lot to cheer about. Florida State not only trails, it is being shut out on the road. Obviously, it's toughest trip in here in a long time. With Keith Jones, Tom Block, I'm Paul Kennedy, Chris Ricks at the helm. He starts first down at his 44. State's offensive line had allowed only one sack for the first two weeks of the season. Rex has been peppered a couple of times. This time it's Isaac Moring who does the damage. Moring doesn't get a lot of playing time, Paul. He plays behind Julius Peppers. He's at the top of your screen. They're going to do a little stunt. He's going to slide inside, and the tackle goes outside. That's a twist, and nobody steps down inside to pick up Moring. Great call by defensive coordinator John Tentune. And the loss is all the way back to the Florida State 33. A loss of 11. They're bringing heat again, bringing five. Ricks with man coverage, finds Walker. Walker at midfield. Comes to the sideline, gets a block. He's to the 35, still on his feet, 30-yard line. You live and die by the blitz. They got burned there. 
Walker to the North Carolina 30. They pick up 37, 38 yards. And a great read by Chris Ricks this time. Again, Carolina comes with pressure. A late blitz by the linebacker. He finds the open man. Watch good effort downfield as a Florida State receiver. Number 24, B.J. Ward gets in, tries to get a block. And I think Javon just ran out of juice. So let's get down here and regroup. Biggest play of the game for Florida State. Looking for a spark itself. It's leading receiver in Walker from Lafayette, Louisiana. A 38-yard game. Long drink of water. You see, he shaved his head. <laughs> Prior to the UAB game, he and Atrus Bell and Tolman Gardner saying they've recommitted to the program, needed a fresh start. Those are Javon's numbers coming into the ball game. They're not updated, and he'll add to that plus 20-yard average. That's a, a I'm thinking you and I should do yeah, that. I, I was thinking there was a, a guy by the name of Jordan who attended undergraduate school here that has a similar look to him. And he played basketball. He went on to play a little round ball. Yeah, didn't he sure he? did. Well, a football spotted just inside the 30-yard line. Tallman Gardner in the game now for Rick. Five wide. And three to the top of your screen, including Gardner. Blindside pressure. Ricks able to get it away, and he throws for a touchdown to Coleman Gardner. Against the blitz, he stayed on his feet and throws the touchdown of 30 yards. You're seeing the development, the maturation process of a young man because Chris knew he was going to get absolutely level. Gardner broke free way to the outside with wide, wide open. Rick's able to stand in there tall and get the ball to him. Great throw, great catch. When we show you that again, our corner Derek Johnson missed him. Tommy Patio with the extra point. And it is good. Corona off the upright. And this one against UAB, this one is good. But Tallman Gardner with his second touchdown reception in as many games. Hauled in a 32-yarder in the UAB win. And here from 30 yards out. And look at the pressure come and somehow Johnson misses Rick. He does miss him because Chris steps up real nice. He likes a nice little under move and then stands tall knowing he's going to get nailed. And look how wide, wide open Tallman is. And just catch it and move him forward. You said five wide, you head up, up to the top, and the corner bites on the out route, safety gets turned back inside. That's Billy D. Greenwood, number 28, and you see the aftermath. That's not because he's hurt, that's because he's thankful. Nice gesture, too, by Ricks there on that right armband for uh, New York and the D.C. victims of those tragedies. Tom and Gardner, only the third receiver today for Florida State to catch a pass. You know, in the, in the UAB game, he had hit 10 different receivers. Ten had different to people. He's limited, though. It's selected. Carolina, with what it's doing defensively, limiting his options. And he finds Gardner open. We are tied with five minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the first half. You have to say that, that Carolina obviously is playing as well as it has all season. Its offense has been able to sustain its defense. A couple of mistakes on that drive, but here to four had, had defended Ricks and the Knowles very well. Well, and to be fair, too, Florida State apparently not coming to play, at least in the first quarter. I don't know if the noon kickoff was uh, a little too early, but they're waking up. They kick off to the seven-yard line and back out to the... Uh, 18 the return will be a but 10 yards play Kevin Knight on this return off the kickoff by Jesse Stein and uh, Augustin has his third stop well the numbers tell it all don't they they really do and again I'm, I'm a little wondering why Curry even got back in there in that series prior he got a flag down I believe on the field Curry as a captain and talk about it. If you're Carolina, you're going to force, if it's against Florida State, obviously, to kick it again. Of encroachment by the kick. Five yards will re kick. Florida State holding the return inside the 20, but they'll have to do it all over again. Got a nice group of Florida State faithful up here. They've, they've got the far 
part of the stadium and either wing in the end zone. But most but, of the marching chiefs have joined them too. See a couple of the tubas upper right hand corner. The Florida State. They had a uh, sound system blaring today. Some Aerosmith, which Keith particularly is fond of. And when the marching chiefs began to play, well, they drowned they out. It up. Stevie Tyler, you couldn't hear a, a word. Well, they came back with some good Almond Brothers, too. <laughs> they did they have were some Almond Brothers. Dicky Betts. All right, Jesse Stein, his first year as a Seminole, his first trip here, and there must be some wind gusting about, although the treetops aren't moving much at the top of the stadium. Nor are the flags that are affixed to the top of the uprights. College coaches will tell you that this setting is picturesque, and in the eyes of a professional college football coach, this may be one of the great jobs, all of coaching, this setting, this university. Lovely day today. Bounds along the ground. Scooped up by Michael Waddell, back into the end zone, and now he'll down it on one knee, and that's a touchback. But by the blink of an eye, we're bringing it out to the 20-yard line. That is, of course, a free ball. He does have to corral it. Now it'll be out to the 20, and once again, here's Tom on the sideline. Hey, thanks, Paul. You know, earlier I talked about the 99 game when FSU was here. How about the 97 game, the biggest ACC football game in history? The only time two teams in the ACC have met when they're both in the top five. It was a good night for Florida State. They were number two coming in. Carolina was number five, and FSU's defense simply ate up the North Carolina team that night. Eight sacks on the Carolina quarterbacks. The offense put up 20 points, including a great catch by E.G. Green for a touchdown. 20 to 3 the final and since that point Paul Florida State has played in three national title games Carolina is on to its third head coach how times have changed well today Carolina's put up a pretty good fight guys that's real down on contact as Curry is roughed up at the 14 yard line but back to Tom's point it it was a, a fork in the road and for Mac Brown Mac Brown would leave here he went 11 and 1 that season and believed he could not win he had taken this program as far as he could he couldn't win the ACC he went off to Texas he did a nice fake here by Curry but just too much pressure let's see if the ball comes out early wrapped up there by Kendall Pope that's uh, pretty close they ruled him down by contact Carolina would back up uh, you can make a case for what the officials saw there uh -huh. on the inside Jeff Womble He's the one passing that shot on Andre Williams. I want to go back to that 97 game that we were talking about, Paul. A total of 41, 41 players on both sides of the ball that played in that 97 contest went on to play in the NFL. And there you see how those paths have gone opposite directions. Florida State 36 and 5, and Carolina with a losing record. Carolina went 3 and 8. Two years later, six and five last year, and Carl Torbush now the defensive coordinator at the University of Alabama. Williams with a flag in behind him, wrapped up by Abdul Howard to the sideline. The rover back. The way the flag was chucked by the umpire and uh, Tom Locke, that would be holding. That is. Got to be holding. You see, they want to decline it, this Florida State. <laughs> Bobby Bowden's staff, and you saw Mickey along with Joe there, only Paterno at Penn State has a staff with more experience collectively than Andrews, Kimes, Jeff Bowden, right through the ranks, Jim Gladden brings in all of college football. All the experience, the wisdom. And how they know each other so well is great. We'll see another look at it. Great inside move there to force the ball carrier outside. If Howard comes up and makes the tackle for very little gain, Florida State declines the penalty, forces fourth down. I believe that was Travis Johnson, number 99, had that great inside move, if I called his number correctly. Unlikely to play today because of uh, ankle problems. Now, Odell, Odell was nice. He said his ankle was tender. Yeah. Odell Higgins, of course, the defensive line coach. Some questions on the field between the linesman and uh, our referee, Ron Cherry, Jimmy Higgins, the offensive line coach, with his unit back to come on. You see Billy Sexton to the running back coach. And his 25th season of his alma mater. A putter, John Lafferty, over his head, out of the end zone, a safety for Florida State. And the Seminoles lead. 
nine to seven. Well, the deep snapper for Carolina is number 56, Greg Warren. And you'll remember that Florida State exploded in the second quarter against Duke, mainly with two punts that were blocked and returned for touchdowns. And Warren a little bit anxious, a little bit too strong, and I'm sure they've seen the film and snaps the ball right over the punter's head, John Lafferty. And that's two points, and you have to kick the ball away. Another look at it here. Just too strong. Florida State appeared to be going with a return. Everybody locking up and trying to hold people. Right over John Lafferty's head. In less than three minutes, Florida State has scored on a Chris Ricks, the Tom and Gardner touchdown pass, major the extra point, and now this safety. The punt snapped out of the end zone. Florida State with nine points in less than three minutes. How uplifting it is for the Garnet and Gold, how demoralizing it is for a Carolina team that had dominated the first half. Such is the fickle nature of football. And again, I go back right after the successful drive by Durant. Ron Curry, Ronald Curry comes right back in and Carolina's offense sputters. Well, you could certainly make a case if you're uh, Gary Prankwell to his head coach and uh, John Bunning that you have to play the freshman. I mean, there's a sparkle to him and quarterback play, of course, it's all about winning, moving the stakes. The free kick, the punt, Pro Thorpe on the return. Up to the 40 yard line, yanked out of bounds and into the Seminole sideline, and he did not like that one bit. Thought it was late by Chris Curry. And Curry had him up high. And uh, Profonso Thorpe took exception to that. But Florida State will benefit from the football. Good field position at the 42-yard line and all the time in the world with three timeouts left, 322 to go in the first And again, field position is so key. Florida State has enjoyed good field position here in the second quarter where Carolina had all the first quarter field position. Updated numbers on Chris Ricks, right over 100 yards. Maturing the leader of this offense, Chris Ricks. Look at him settle in the pocket and off the fingertips of his intended target and Andrews Bell coming across the middle. Again, I talked earlier about how Florida State needs to work those 15, 18 yard in routes across the middle. You're seeing them go to it. The ball is, leads the receiver just a little bit much. But a nice, nice route and almost catch by Atrus. That's one that he'll look at the film tomorrow evening, Sunday evening or Monday, and he'll know that he would like to have caught that kick himself for not having done so. Not a reception, or he has one. Does a true spell in this game. Ricks holds on to this. Tomahawk from behind at midfield. Joey Evans gets to him. Big senior from Fayetteville. Florida State trying to capitalize on that good forward press by both Peppers and Evans and Isaac Morey, number 92, when he's in there. Watch the defensive ends go outside, a design call right up the middle, and then watch from the backside. Evans comes in and tries to slap the ball away. Other down. Eights across the 47. Did not get there about the 48 yard line. Peppers, Waddell up from the secondary. Hey, Julius Peppers covers a lot of ground for Carolina. Waddell and now on fourth down near midfield. Would you go for this? It's going to be a tough call. Again, stunning by the defensive line. Tackles go out, ends go inside, Peppers comes all the way across. That's 6'6", 285 pounds is Peppers. Carolina has too many men, it appears, on the field. They have 12, confused defensively. They'll run the toss sweep to Greg Jones, and he has the first down to the short side of the field. Carolina was unsettled with its defensive unit. Coordinator John Tenuta unable to communicate the 11 that they want in on that short yardage package. And I don't know exactly what Coach Tenuta was trying to get in, but again, great deal of confusion, you see. Pepper's making his way, his way back. John Bunnick, North Carolina class of 72. This played. Is not the play. There is no penalty on the play. The result of the play is first down. 
because Carolina running players on and off. Played for Bill Doolin. Tied for second most wins in the history of Carolina, but in the late 60s, early 70s, Bill Dooley, players like John Bunting and Don McCauley, recently inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, dominated the Atlantic Coast Conference. Great, great history here with this Carolina program. Ricks batted down across the middle. Joey Evans, maybe Will Chapman, number 91. Number 91, Chapman got his hand up. We've said it so many times, particularly if you're tackling those guards, you're not getting a good push. When you feel the quarterback is going to release the ball, get up vertical. Get your hands up. Try to cut down those passing lanes. Number 91, right in the middle from his nose tackle position. You see him get a big paw up right when that ball goes up. That's exactly how it's coached. Good blocking by Montre Holland, but good anticipation by Chapman. Minute and a half left in the first half. Coming after Ricks, incomplete. Intended for Donaldson. Juggle. The only reason Ricks wasn't sacked is that DeAndre Peppers was being held on to. The 49, Keith, was uh, it was a little stretch. <laughs> yeah. It was bottom watching. of your screen, bottom of your screen. Peppers going to get off the line quick, and then the tight end across the middle. That's twice we've seen Florida State go to the tight end and unsuccessful. It's big Todd Williams. I didn't grab him that much. He just gave him a little shove. Just enough. Knock him off balance. Third down now. Peppers again. They throw the screen. Maddox to the 35. And now it's fourth down and four. You have Saviat Betia, who has kicked a 40-yarder. This would be a 52. Would you take a shot? These are all bonus points for you, ones you didn't expect to have after the safety. And there's a minute remaining. I think Florida State will take a timeout for two reasons. Number one, to stop the clock, although it, it, it would not have run down or run out. But number two, uh, this is a little far for Saviat. His accuracy is phenomenal, but his leg strength about 45 yards is the make or break it uh, yardage for him. And this will be just a little outside of his normal range, Paul, at 52. Now, there's no indication that they're going to send him onto the field, although he leads the Atlantic Coast Conference in scoring. He has kicked five field goals in the first two weeks of the season. Savia Betia with a kicking game in much better shape than it has been in recent seasons. And you see. Bathia. Tampa, Jesuit High School there, freshman. Before we forget, while we have a moment, we want to wish Davey Ford well. Senior running back who unfortunately suffered his third ACL knee injury in three years for Florida State against UAB. And after undergoing surgery, his career at Florida State is over and for all of us it's a it's a bitter disappointment because we admired his courage and his resiliency and Davey if you are watching we are thinking you here at uh, North Carolina and I know your teammates are to come back from one surgery is tough to come back from two is, is almost impossible and the courage and dedication he showed in his rehabilitation was phenomenal Bobby Bowden saying it broke his heart Florida State on fourth down and needing four. From the gun. Rex throws underneath, flag in, pass dropped by Atrus Bell, who's enduring a tough afternoon. Carolina. It's two he has dropped today. Gonna have a hold against Florida State. Obviously, Carolina will decline that and take over the ball. They have time uh, to make Holy. a move offensively. On the offense, the penalty is declined. Fourth down. If I am John Bunnett, I am putting Darian Durant in the game against Bobby's defense. Ron, Ron's going to need to collect himself. It's not fourth down. It's first down going the other way. Here again, Burr, all a bit rusty twist up the middle between the tackle and the nose guard, but that's a ball Atrus has got to catch. You've got to catch that ball. Darian Durant back in at the helm. He has completed five out of six, and Carolina moves when he's under center, but not this time. They won't get away from Kendall Pope, 
On running back, Andre Williams. Pope's sixth tackle of the first half. He's just always around the football. Coaches uh, loving his instinct. He's added a little bit of weight. He'll add some more as he gets a little older. Playing right now at about 220. 220, maybe 225. Second down and Durant. Around Pope. Used his blocker well and punished at the 45-yard line. Close to the first down, Chris Holt. One of the Seminoles that gets off the stack. And North Carolina appears that it will use its third and final timeout. Again, a design play. Fullback's going to lead Durant up just like he were a tailback. A little interesting call or suspect call there. I would think you would want to put the ball up in the air. You've got 23, excuse me, 19 ticks left on the clock now. Andre Powell, running back coach, relay, offensive coordinator Gary Tranquil's call from upstairs. On the other side of the field, the chess game played out. Mickey Andrews, corner Rufus Brown, along with Joe Kine. See, Rufus is the nickelback. So what Mickey is looking for upstairs is personnel. Who is Carolina going to come out with? If they come out with three or four wide, He'll run Rufus in, take out one of the linebackers. And Durant. Run the ball effectively. Just galloped for close to 10. And uh, has thrown five out of six. 36 yards today in his first game at Keenan Stadium. And they, and they say he looks like Curry did when Ronald had his confidence when he was younger, but no longer. Needs a yard on third down. 19 seconds remain. Out of timeouts. Well, it appeared he has the first down. And Bradley Jennings on the stop that temporarily stops the clock. Now, Carolina, I don't think if you're a Tar Heel fan with 10 seconds to go, you can complain at all for the fact you played Florida State within a field goal on the first down. Not, not a complaint in the world. They'll yep. spike the ball here and give them one last shot with seven ticks remaining. Of course, the clock stops to reset the chains after the first down and then starts immediately. They have missed today a 53-yarder by Jeff Reed. His career best is 48. So they would need to get the ball to about the 30 yard line need to get about 25 yards to have pretty good confidence they could salvage three out of that. I don't know they can uh, make up that much ground in seven seconds. So they'll set up the, the big bin three receivers to the bottom of your screen for Durant who has the arm to check his 60 yards. Watch. Here it comes in the air batted around Florida State actually grabs it on the final play of the half it's intercepted by Chris Holt. Chris Holt. And how fitting because we'll get it up close and personal look at Chris oh. at halftime. Stage presence. Yes an eye for the dramatic. It's 9-7 Florida State on a gorgeous day at Keenan. The fifth ranked Seminoles lead at halftime. on him about that. He also singled out the tight ends. You know, there's a lot of people that always ask, why doesn't he throw to the tight end? Well, he threw to the tight end twice in the first half. They didn't make the catch. So it's just a matter of Florida State making some plays, and Coach Bowden obviously not very pleased with the way they uh, they didn't make those plays in the first half, guys. And across the field, I would think that Bowden's counterpart in John Bunnick has to be delighted with where he stands now. He has yet to win a game. And his return to his alma mater, but no North Carolina team has started 0 and 4 since uh, 1988. That was Mac Brown's first season back in North Carolina. Now that Mac Brown in his first two years here, for all the talk of his great success, won a grand total of two, two games. games. It'll take a while for John Buddy, but he is facing a perennial powerhouse, a team that has been beaten but twice through 10 years of ACC play. In Florida State and has taken it to the Knolls today. Here is our kickoff. We're underway with Dell. Five yards into the end zone. I'd like to begin it at the 20. Now, you're Do you start Darian Durant? 
or your senior in Ronald Curry. This right, is the fourth. You go with Durant. And there's the statistical reason why. Look at this, folks. Five drives when Ronald Curry started the series. Four total yards of offense. When the freshman's in there, three dives, 73 yards, including the TD. And during that time, Durant went five for seven in the passing statistics. So we have shared together Durant's debut at Keenan. And at times, he's been fantastic. In business from his 20 to open the second half. Pressure coming, an open target, and nearly a first down. May have it up at the 30-yard line. That's Brandon Russell, just a sophomore, but a year ago was Carolina starting tailback. That's his first catch. Well, and, and Russell's been replaced, as it were, by both Andre Williams and Willie Parker, and we saw Jock Lewis a little earlier. Very deep at the tailback position is Carolina. And all of their backs are able to catch the ball effectively out of the backfield. So, Brandon Russell, the sophomore from Decatur, Georgia, he was their first starter at tailback a year ago since Charlie Choo Choo Justice back in 1946. So, the first freshman ever started tailback since the uh, Tar Heel Immortal, Choo Choo. I can always be thankful that my parents didn't give me that nickname. As you see, Abdul Howard being escorted off a little bit. Hey guys. It's Randy Orvitz, the director of sports training at Florida State. The little guy, the short guy, and Dr. Tom Haney, one of the orthopedic surgeons at the top. Claudius Osei, a freshman. There's number 27. will check in to take his place at Rover. He's creeping up. Here's Osei. Tip to Blitz, and he's coming. Durant throws. Bobble picked off. Stanford Samuels. Then he fumbled. Back at the 35-yard line, and Carolina has it back. Might have broken their spirit right there. Had Florida State taken it away. Andre Williams. We well, mentioned. You mentioned Osei. Watch from the center of your screen. Osei's going to work right to left and step right in front of the intended receiver. That's the tight end. He's going to go back inside, throw the ball. That gives Stanford Samuels time to step in front of him. Now, wrap it up. Wrap it up. That even converts to a first down. I believe Andre Williams got on that ball for Carolina. What were you saying earlier about good things happening to Durant, bad things for Curry? It's a sparkle to him, and now Williams has four. Curry failed to complete a pass today, and if Durant continues to play well, Tatum on this stop here, you might say that, barring injury to Durant, that Curry's career is finished. Well, we said that at the top of the show. That was the feeling we were getting as we walked around here a couple of hours early talking to some of the Carolina people. Not so much that they're down on Curry, just so many good things are happening with Durant. But the young staff, the freshman quarterback, it's enticing to play him, let him develop. Toward Corey Bailey in front of Tatum to the 45 yard line, and it could be a Carolina first down. There is Malcolm Tatum, the junior from Miami, playing sideline to sideline this afternoon. That's a tough throw for any right handed quarterback. Very shallow little sprint out there. Nice delivery, nice catch. Carolina converting the first down. And continuing to move the ball. This is the first ACC game of the afternoon. Maryland and Wake Forest playing later today. Both unbeaten. Ralph Friedgen in his first year at Maryland and Jim Grove at Wake Forest. Both are 2-0. and all. First year, Keith. We have Wake Forest next week on Sunshine Network. Both off to great starts. And the winner of that game is going to be in pretty good shape. He typically is what's happened in recent years to go to a bowl game. I mean, someone, and you know by now, watching somebody start at 3-0 as you look at the ACC standings. Jim Grobe came to Wake Forest from Ohio. Ralph Friedgen returning to his alma mater as Bunting is here. <laughs> Wide open, the defender fell out. Out of there, Carolina touchdown.
Kevin Durant's second touchdown pass. Borders catches his second of the season. Carolina leads once again. Jeff Reed out to tack on the extra point. Fourteen to nine. The unintimidated Tar Heels. Nothing fancy. Nothing you can say about this other than. Tatum fell down. That allows Borders to come wide open and just load into the end zone. You know, that's one of the dangers about running this press defense that everyone is playing now. If you get someone that has a, a, a human breakdown or a physical breakdown that time, Malcolm Tatum losing his footing, then uh, it leads to big plays, and we go back for the umpteenth time already this afternoon. How about the great things that happens to this Carolina offense when Darian Duran is in there. You know, it reminds me a bit of Joe Hamilton, who played at Georgia Tech and now in the NFL with the Buccaneers. Georgia Tech had this same sparkle around it when he was on the field. The sum of the parts were far greater. Borders a major surprise this year. The junior from Shelby, North Carolina, he connected for a touchdown against national champion Oklahoma in the season opener. And here, the longest of his young career, 52 yards away with Tatum having stumbled. Great concentration by Borders. That ball was a little underthrown. He had to do a kind of an acrobatic adjustment to get turned around and get his hands up and didn't panic. Brought it in, loped into the end zone. That certainly gets the crowd back in it. What about Stanford Samuel's fumbled interception? This shouldn't have happened. The Seminoles have two interceptions. Both are meaningless. Thor. To the 30. Upfield to the 37-yard line. Let's check in with Tom Block down on the sideline. Back to the top in a moment. Thorpe with a nice return. More and more opportunities to get pro the ball. Florida State's looking for ways. You see him in on the kickoff returns. You've seen him call to catch a couple of passes. Very dangerous in the open field. Just a freshman out of Tallahassee. Performing very well. All purpose yardage. Kick returns. Receiving. Ricks. First possession. Chase, sack again, the third time. Ryan sends the senior, yanks him down. That big run stuffer, all 300 pounds of him, latched on and wouldn't let go. Well, you know the old phrase about being a, being a coverage sack. That's a second sack on the year for Sims. A twist up front. Tackles go outside. The ends come inside. Good job by Florida State's offensive line for a period of time. Coverage sack. Nobody open. And Sims and company get to Chris. The loss all the way back to the 24. The screen to Maddox. Needs help. Breaks one. There's Carolina again. The linebacker in Monk, Errol Hood. He had Montre Holland out there, the pulling guard, but he couldn't get position for this block. Now Holland comes out number 61, but he just can't get downfield enough. Errol Hood comes up and forces, excuse me, Kelvin Knight comes up and forces Nick and then a number of powder blue jerseys get over there. A lot of people flying around the ball in this pumped up Carolina defense. Third down, needing close to 30. Maddox slips. And Florida State will punt. It would be emotional today for Maddox, running back coach Billy Sexton, a bobble snap from center. Gwaltney kicks it off the side of his foot. It's getting away from the nose. Spotted at the Seminole 30, five-yard line. A punt. Florida 
Florida State's coaches. Upstairs includes Daryl Dickey, the quarterback coach, John Lilly. All in there trying to strategize for the man on the other end of those headphones. And Bobby Bowden. It's defense now. John Bunning wants to quiet him down with that young freshman in there. He's throwing two touchdown passes today in Darian Durant. Great field position. Going upstairs again if he can. Alludes two tackles and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Runs through two. Carolina not pulling any punches. They were trying to get the ball downfield to Bosley Allen on a deep, deep post route. Florida State's going to rush four and then a little bit of a delayed rush with Monster coming up. He runs out of one, runs out of two, does Durant. Kendall Pope and Abdul Howard with a little help from Michael Bolware there to stop him. A little more bravado play to They're taking more chances now. Good coverage by the Knowles. Here they run inside. The misdirection. The pitch to the 30-yard line and out of bounds taken. A first down for the Tar Heels. At the Seminole 23. Well, we called that earlier the feast or famine play. It goes nowhere or it goes a lot. That time Aiken does a great job of getting inside the backside. Watch Howard come up and he'll go right inside. Tackle comes across and just screens him. Pope can't get there. He turns the corner. Pushed out of bounds by Howard. Andre Williams. Good hard four off the right side. This sophomore at 215 pounds and Andre Williams gets it up inside effectively. They have run him today 15 times and he's getting close to 40 yards. Not a lot of yards, but it keeps the clock going. And uh, he busts into that Joe Kynes defense pretty well. Very much so. And of course, the more you keep the ball from Florida State, the more you take away the opportunity for Florida State to get some momentum going on offense. And Eats up the clock and you move down the field. Try him again. Outside, Samuels can't get there. He's two yards shy of the first down. Hope recovered. Got a pretty good move, didn't he, on Stanford Samuels on the edge. 6'1", 214, 215, like you talked about. Does have some quickness. He's coming right at you from ground level. Third down, and what you'd have to believe is four down territory with Carolina leading 14 to 9. Now, some Corey Bailey, the top of your picture, the dangerous ache into the bottom of your screen. Running back Williams in the pattern. Over the middle, throwing, batted away, incomplete by Malcolm Tatum. Intended for a sliding Corey Bailey. Tatum acrobatically had to fall in front of it. What a nice move by Tatum and a nice throw by Durant. That little fake slant and then right over the top. Great job by Durant to keep that ball low. Makes it that much more difficult for Tatum to get there. Carolina will settle for a field goal attempt. This would be their first field goal of the year from 32. This one has the distance and Carolina has that first field goal. Jeff Reed expands the Tar Heel lead to 17 tonight from 32 yards out. On the road when character is needed now, trailing 17 tonight. The North Carolina staff, the tip of the cap to those gentlemen. They have done a terrific job. It's James Webster, defensive end coach, also works with special teams. Trying to keep that spirit intense for these young kids. On the verge of a major upset. Gary and Durant with two touchdown strikes today. And this one here to Chesley Borders. That went for 52 yards. And then a lot of pressure by this defensive front. Chris Rick sack. And the kickoff. And Crowthorpe will bring it out of there. To the 15, maybe. First man to reach him was Michael Harris on special team. Returned at 14 yards out of his own end zone. Florida State has to begin on the wrong side of the 15-yard line. With, with ample times, 
calm this situation down. You have a crowd of nearly 60,000 on hand today for the home opener. And they have gotten into it. Certainly not a time to panic. You want to stay within yourself, stay within your game plan, but Florida State opting to go with the I formation backed up here in their own territory. Quincy Monk will not let Greg Jones get away. A negligible gain on the play, second down. There's Monk, the senior from Jacksonville, North Carolina. That's a big Marine base. Jacksonville, North Carolina, and one of six separate fifth-year senior starters for North Carolina playing today. A lot of experience was brought to the table by these fifth-year seniors. See a great struggle there for extra yardage by Jones and a better struggle by Monk. Of his last five passing attempts, Chris has completed one. That was for minus two yards, so he's cold. Can't run here. Ryan Sims just sat in wait. The vocal leader of the defense, big number 87, playing to the crowd. Ricks was trying to get that ball over the middle to the tight end, and number 54, Merceda Perry, doing a great job of covering. Seemed looking towards the tight end right over the middle and just nowhere to go. Andre Holland trying to block it. In his 26th consecutive start, the experience of a senior in Ryan Sen. Ricks gets this away. Javon Walker may be gone. Javon Walker will go the distance. 20, 10, 5, touchdown Florida State. But there is a flag that lays back in the backfield. And it's coming back. Holding the indication against Florida State that will erase an 85-yard Ricks to Javon Walker touchdown strike. Oh, my. Some of that Darian Durant magic has gone over to the defensive side as well. Holding on the offense. Half distance to the goal. We'll replay the deck. See if we can pick it up. See if we can get a look, as you say, up at the top. That's Brett Williams on Julius Peppers. He's got him wrapped right there. You can't do that. That's a hold. And a goal. I mean, th th that is the evidence of the call. I would only wish in college football, as they do in the professional ranks and in basketball, announce the number of the offender. And the biggest thing that Brett did there he can't do is you cannot get your hands outside the torso, the frame of the defender. You can use your hands, but you can't get them outside that, that magical box. At age 17, backed up near his goal line. On third down. Too much time. Too much time. Ball's dead. A whistle had blown. And uh, Ricks with some words for Atrus Bell. Snap. The late game on the offense. Distant. Still third down. But as if Atrus Bell could not get set. With a young quarterback, you want to get that play in as early as you can against the play clock. So he'll have ample time. And remember, too, Florida State shuttles the play in. They do not signal it in, and therefore that takes a little longer than if you were to single it. Here and there with 15 or 20 seconds on that play clock. Right now it has only 10 seconds. You hear the roar. He throws it as far as he can. Gardner is there. Flag down, however. Flag down. Contact. No, receiver went out of bounds. Illegal receiver. A beanbag thrown and then the flag. Marked at the 35-yard line. Dr. Ronald Curry, field judge Billy Beckett with this goal.
There is no penalty flag on the plate. What the officials should have done was have a bean bag for the offensive player going out of bounds. There is no foul. I meant to get the bean bag, got the flag. Well, it's only a penalty of the offensive player is the first one to touch the ball once he goes out of bounds. Unless he was forced out of bounds. Unless he was forced. You see, he was coming back in. Run without being forced. And it was touched first by the defensive player, which makes it not a foul. Florida State really in trouble, Paul. Chance Walton will be standing a yard shy of his inline. Ryan Sawyer to punt the football. Miles Allen. Carolina should get great field position. Walton, get it away. He did not hit it well. It bounds out of bounds again at the Florida State 35. Walton with two very poor punts. One of 12 that produced the go-ahead touchdown, or the field goal, rather, in 197. And now this of only 31 yards. Carolina with the ball in Florida State territory. On the right, of course, Bobby Bowden, his 26th year at Florida State, his 36th year as a head coach, hunting today his 318th career win, ranking second only to Joe Paterno among active coaches. Which man is leading in this game, however, in the second half? Young freshman quarterback in Darian Durant. With each moment, with each minute, he etches an unforgettable chapter in North Carolina lore in his debut. Play action for him. He's thrown two TDs today, being chased by Manster, and he chucks this one into the Florida State sideline. That was Bradley Jennings coming after him. The ACC Defensive Player of the Week for his performance in the win over Conference UA. A Conference USA member, Alabama Birmingham, a couple of weeks ago. As all Florida State fans know, his nickname is Monster. Huge reputation amongst the players for his hard hitting. Florida State staff was screaming for an intentional grounding on that. There was not a Carolina receiver anywhere near, but Durant was outside the tackle box. Again, throwing up that boundary with coverage from Tatum. Contact, no flag. Chesley Borders had caught the 52-yarder against Tatum earlier. They have tested Malcolm Tatum time and time again today. Recall as well Malcolm's diving deflection of a pass intended in the end zone for Corey Bailey that forced the field goal. Well, as a cornerback, you've got to have no memory. You've got to be completely able to play every play as a new play. It doesn't matter what happened earlier. Every play is a new play. You see Mickey was hollering some instructions at Malcolm as well. Florida State with a touchdown and a safety, and that is it today. Now on third down. Over the middle and dropped by Corey Bailey. Bailey was open at the 15-yard line. Hit him right in the hands, perfectly thrown by Darian Durant. It's the first time we've seen the Durant magic not work. Nice route. Pushes inside and straight across. Tatum's got to get way closer than that. That's way too open. The offense remains on the field on fourth down and 10 at the Florida State 35 yard line following the short punt. So for John Bunning, why not? At worst, Florida State begins at its own 35. There goes a Durant. Well, That's behind the line. Quick you can advance it. that. And it's out of bounds. He looked a quick kick it. And it went off the side of his foot into the Seminole bench. Now, did he hurt himself in trying to do that? He's limping to the sideline. Something didn't come out right. This is two times that Florida State's defense, Paul, has come in with the ball on the 35-yard line. They've shut Carolina down for just three points, and now no points. I'm not sure if Durant pulled or twisted something. Uh, with that, but that's a negative punt. Negative yardage. If he has injured himself, John Bunning will be kicking himself for a long time to come. Gonna pull a hamstring. Ricks goes to work. Contact well before the pass was delivered to Javon Walker and no flag. And the Seminole bench explodes. Michael Waddell and Walker were entangled. Second down. 
Michael Waldell Jr., 5'11", 169 pounds. Exceptional speed. He'll be working right to left as you look at it. Rick stands in there and throws the ball, goes right over the top. He does have that left hand on the back. About seven out of ten times, you'll get a flag on that. He got away with one. Hit the pass for positive yardage in his last six attempts. Down the middle for Maddox. He drops out. Seven attempts. That was underthrown. They had the fast Maddox isolated on a linebacker in Quincy Monk, they the got, middle linebacker. They got the matchup they wanted. Had Maddox on Monk. Ball is slightly underthrown, but it looked catchable. Nick gets right around him. That's a ball he should have caught, and he knows it. Now third down. They need to advance it to the 48. Rick will have to do it with his feet. Sliding across midfield and then taking a late shot. No flag here. No flag because he missed. Well, the bench is livid. They thought that was a spear on Dexter Reed. Seminole sideline with every snap now is as demonstrative as we have perhaps ever seen. Nice job by Chris to get up field and get the first down. Right at the end, Reed comes in and look at that. That is a spear. That should be 15. I thought he missed him when we saw it from the sideline angle. Bobby Bowden is hot, and you don't want to get on his bad side. Ricks moving the nose. Oh, Slings no. and it's picked off. Intercepted by Julius Peppers. To the 42 yard line. The third Seminole turnover of this game. The first interception. Carolina with two interceptions all year long. Julius Peppers has both of them. He's just not found, not supposed to be there. He returned one earlier in the season, 29 yards for a touchdown. This time he returns it and gives Carolina good field position on about the 42. And that little spy technique where he drops off from his defensive end position and he shows you his athletic ability, he can go up and get some rebounds and snag some interceptions. Now, Ronald Curry is back at quarterback. Darian Durant had left after the quick pick limping off. Inside get to Jock Lewis. So Tom Block will be checking out the status of Darian Durant. Uh, he may well be injured on that Carolina sideline. We could play a major role in this football game that has four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Well, that would certainly be the only reason you would think you would bring Curry back in. To Ronald's credit, You've got a senior, been to the war, been to the fire a lot of times, can step right in and maybe have some of that little magic run off, magic run, rub off on him. Jack Lewis underneath. First down. 28 yard line. Chris Hope on the stop. You see there why they like that little freshman. Ran around three Florida State defenders. They were up in good position and he just sidestepped all of them. Working down to the lower part of your screen. He'll take the ball. Watch, there's some white jerseys up here, and he runs around all three of them. Michael Bulware back in for Florida State. Checking out Rufus Brown. And whistles. Part of the snap of the ball. Flag down. Outside. This brings up the equivalent of a three-play call, first and five. Last time Carolina was in a similar position, they went for the home run on the fade route. Mickey with the back of the El Paso sophomore Rufus Brown. Back in he comes, and off will go Bullware. Well, now, in this case, rather than Bullware coming off the field, they pull Tony Penford. The junior nose guard. And you see AD 
Andrew McPherson loosening for Florida State. Will he come in for Chris Rick? Curry wrapped up by Alonzo Jackson. Who's in the backfield almost with the snap of the shotgun. He's so quick off the ball. He's become a lot more disciplined than he's reads and what he's trying to do and about the time Curry pulls the ball back from that play fake Zoe's right on top of him. Anzo Jackson from America's Georgia. Very fleet footed senior. Now digs in second down after the gain of one. Blitz coming. I got it away. Throwing bars can't make the one handed catch. Allen against Stanford Samuels trying to make that left handed one handed catch the Bradenton Florida Junior Southeastern High School there. I was one play too early Florida State coming on a blitz. Not a bad job by Samuels to get up there and disrupt another look at it here. Almost makes the catch. Before he hurt that right knee a couple of years ago, he was, and may still be, one of the ACC's most electrifying players. He'll certainly hurt you on a punt return every now and then, no doubt about it. Third down. Big snap for Curry. For the corner, Tatum pumped. Corey Bailey. Pass not catchable. And it's fourth down. Well, I think North Carolina will settle for a field goal attempt here. Possibly. I'm sure they don't want to try that punt routine again. Jeff Reed is on. He's missed from 53, converted from 32. This is a 39 yard effort from the hash. Out of the hole to Richard Moore. It's down. It's got the leg. He's done it again. Good from 39. Important point for Carolina now doubles up Florida State. It's 20 to 9. The interception by Julius Peppers, the third Seminole Turkeys have some answers. With 247 to go. Carolina trailed 9 to 7 at halftime. A touchdown and two field goals here in the third quarter. This is a North Carolina team that had managed only 13 points in the second half collectively in three games. Today, when they get that in this one quarter at the expense of FSU. The pride coming back. Carolina Blue. Wise, a Lou Groza Award candidate. Crow Thorpe off his goal line. Thorpe cuts it back to the 23 24 yard line. And that's the point the Seminoles will go on offense here late in the third. Chris Curry hustling on special teams for the kickoff stop. Now is it Adrian McPherson, the freshman? AD's coming in. Replacing Chris Riggs, a freshman from Bradenton. A varsity action. All I dimensional. Can throw, can run, and you aren't going to run very far when you slip like that. Down goes Greg Jones. As coincidence would have it, Adrian McPherson's final two teams in electing where he would go to college, it came down to Florida State and North Carolina, which wanted him desperately for both its football program and its basketball program. Well, there's also, there was talk, I don't know the truthfulness of it, that when it really came down to it, AD didn't feel like North Carolina would truly give him an opportunity to participate in both like Florida State would. And uh, that, along with some other things, contributed to his decision. Matt Gordon and wanted him. Steve Robinson, too, for basketball. Now Bobby Bowden needs him most. A flag is thrown late, and they may have taken too much time. Too much time. The communication from the sideline that has happened twice today. 
particularly when you're backed up. It's so much more difficult to get the plays in when you're shuttling them in. You're Ron Cherry. Prop to the snap for Dale the left game on the off. Go. It's a three-part process to go from upstairs with the play suggestion from the quarterback coach Daryl Dickey to Jeff Bowden, the offensive coordinator, and then to be signaled or relayed in to the quarterback. It takes time. Well, the signaling would certainly speed it up as they're shuttling it now, particularly when you're backed up on this part. I mean, it's a 25 or 30 yard jaunt just to get. Second down. McPherson. Look at the wheel. Glides up to the 30-yard line on second down. Scampered for 13, leaving him four yards shy of the first down. Let's check in with Tom Block on that Seminole bench. Hey, Paul, you're talking about Florida State getting the plays in. The first time when it was Ricks, part of the problem wasn't how quickly they got the play in. It was that Javon Walker had just gone 85 yards, and the whole offense had run up to celebrate with him and didn't get back in time. This time, obviously, there was trouble with the true freshman and McPherson in there, guys. Third down. And from Rambo with the shotgun snap. McPherson running out of options. And room. Julius Peppers was there. And it gets off the young freshman of McPherson. And Carolina's going to get the football back with less than a minute remaining in the third quarter. Trying to get Nick Maddox out of the backfield. AD takes off, and it's just too much pursuit in this fired up Carolina defense. Chance Gwaltney with two poor punts. Hits this one a bit better toward Bob. Here's Bob Allen. Started right, comes back to the left. Flag in behind the play. To the 40 yard line. And worked over. Changing directions between the hashes, and that brought the flag, a long flag throw in. Kyler Hall made this stop. First gold helmet in for Bowden's team. With 10 seconds to go in the third, trailing 20 to 9. A two possession game at best for Florida State. Holding on the return team. That's a 10 yard penalty, first down. Uh, marching back 10, they'll spot it at the 29 yard line. You know what Mickey and company are telling his defense right now, Paul, is that we've got to have a turnover. We've got defensively, we've got to do something to get our offense a little better field position and give them an opportunity to do something quick. Well, we have a moment, and Curry is out there. Tom, what's the latest with Darian Durant, who is injured? Well, the UNC sideline is saying that he did get kicked on the non-kicking foot on that quick punt, but that's not the reason he's out of the game. They're saying it's just because they're giving Curry some snaps. Seems strange, but that's what they're claiming. I would agree with you. This is Andre Williams, because Tom would agree on it, Keith. You'd Absolutely. That the offense is incomparable between the two. We go to the fourth quarter. Listen to the war the Seminoles are facing as Keenan Stadium is raucous. Its first home game of the year. It's the latest they've started a home slate in a century since 1893. This may be one for the Air Hills. Their mascot, the Ram, where North Carolina in its first home game of the year leads Florida State 20 to 9. Florida State, of course, having dominated the Atlantic Coast Conference, having won nine straight ACC championships, having won 10 or more games in 14 straight years, having been ranked in the top five of the Associated Press Bowl over 14 years, unprecedented. So much in jeopardy at the moment on this third weekend of the college football season. And as we begin the fourth quarter, it's second down and long for Ronald Curry. Stumbles down at the 25-yard line. That may officially go as a Kendall Pope sack. Although it didn't take much to trip him up. And uh, there's a flag down as well. Way downfield. Thrown at midfield. 
which would lead you to believe there was contact between a receiver and a defender. Well, it doesn't matter if there's contact. The ball wasn't thrown. It might have been unsportsmanlike contact. It's a personal foul against Florida State. In the secondary at midfield, and that's an automatic first down. Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yards. Automatic first down. The ninth penalty of this game, and Nicky wants to know who it was on. Arkham Tatum, been very active today. A heart and soul game for him, same too for young sophomore Kendall Polk from Fort White, Florida. First down for North Carolina at its own 40-yard line. Three receiver pattern. Curry, Darnell Dockett, one of the Knowles. Now ball control becomes important here in clock management. Florida State needs two touchdowns to pull this game out in the fourth quarter on the road. All Carolina wants to do, Paul, is just keep that clock ticking. Florida State has been beaten in ACC play only twice in 73 games. Once by Virginia, once by NC State. Two more tough ones off the right side. Hard running in there. Andre Williams. Been busy today, Keith. 18 carries for the sophomore from Durham for nearly 50 yards and Andre Williams. And a lot of that yardage has been right between the tackles, but more importantly now that they're ahead, as you see the career record of FSU in the ACC, his runs keep the ball moving, or um, clock running rather. Conversation has to do with what's going to happen offensively. Third down here, Curry needing to convert. Oh, no. Throws it, wide open, caught, gone, Curry Bailey. out of the Seminole secondary looking at each other as if what happened? What was the mistake? And the defensive backfield, the extra point Jeffrey Cook. Well, what happened is one of them over pursued where they thought Curry was going with the ball. You see him set up right here, and now they run up to try to cover outside. You see Tatum over the right-hand side. Nobody back. You've got to be, if you're a corner or a safety, when the ball, when the uh, quarterback moves, you've got to be as deep as the deepest receiver. That's absolutely fundamental. There is no excuse for a mistake like that. 20 unanswered. Second Every next play was the interception by Peppers, and since then, Florida State has just not been awake. The other thing I've noticed on offense, I think it's very evident that Florida State's receivers are not nearly the caliber that they've had in the past. Where's Robert Morgan? Where's Anquan Bolden? They're needed out there in a game like this, guys. I like some Snoop Menace. Of course, now playing professionally. Only three wide receivers, we've got four today, have touched the football. Pro Thorpe. Great kickoff work today by Jeff Reed. Thorpe juggling this, comes out of his own end zone, gets a block, long flag in the 30 yard line. The flag will be on Florida State. All the way back at about the 10 yard line. Ron Cherry. His ACC crew blocking below the waist. The chop on FSU. Again, Paul, I, I would, backing up what Tommy was saying, this is a mistake. You don't bring this ball out when you're down this far. Nothing good can happen out of this. 
to the goal. Pick First up. down. See it there. And Thorpe with his speed, hoping to uh, make a dramatic play, to, to pop at the distance. It will take heroics the final 13 minutes of this game to save Florida State from what would be its third ACC loss in school history. Chris Curry was shaken up. He's all right now. It's a hand from his head coach. Pretty rugged defender, linebacker in his own right. 30 years ago. Odell Higgins, Darnell Dockett. Defense. Quarterback for Florida State once again is Chris Rakes. We've seen Adrian McPherson for one series. Inside his 10-yard line. And throw it. Atrus Bell, one-handed, juggled out of bounds and spotted for a first down right at the 20-yard line. And guess what? We have another flag. Florida State, this will be the 10th penalty. A fifth holding call today that is a race to first down. Bobby about coming the interior of that line. I think credit is due to the defensive front of North Carolina for causing those problems. Getting angles in the light, Julius Peppers, others. Well, Carolina has done a great job Holding studying the front. On the offense. We're gonna go ahead this is and we'll replay the down. Clearly the trench battle has been won by the Tar Heels. And that, when Florida State has the ball, no question. Offensive coordinator Jeff Bowden. Nick Maddox, three yards into his own end zone. Coming out of there. Diving to the nine. Where it's second down. David Thornton on this stop. A former walk-off. On Walker there. Changing packages of receivers. Second down here. Out of there. Paul, this just takes entirely too much time to get the play in. Florida State has got to go to signaling these plays in. Eight on the play clock. Six on the play clock. Three on the play clock. They got it away with one. Rips, throw. Bell again, but only two yards. Maybe three. In front of Elroy Hood. A veteran corner to senior. So the shortstop might be there, Keith, but it comes under the pressure of the play clock. Carolina is giving you that underneath, leading big as the Tar Heels are 27 up. Well, and they're going to give you that underneath stuff. You're, you're in a three-drive ball game. Florida State's going to have to score three separate times. So let them have all the room they want. Walker and Gardner to the bottom of your screen. Rick's flush. To the 20. Ball. Fumbles again. Picked up by North Carolina and Quincy Monk. Tackle by a champion. Blue heaven in Chapel Hill. The fourth Seminole turnover of the afternoon. This is what happens. Everybody that loves the uh, mobile quarterback loves to have a quarterback can run. This is what happens when you've got a quarterback that can run. More times than not, bad things as opposed to good. Coverage downfield. Chris takes off. He knows he's got to get to the first down marker, but doesn't tuck the ball in. Doesn't is not used to being caught from behind. Ball is stripped. Quincy Monk right there to pick it up. That's actually the fifth turnover, Keith. Four fumbles and one interception. After he had had the first down. First Rex has fumbled a couple times today. Eleven minutes and 14 seconds remaining in this game. As Curry under center. Sends Madison Hedgecock in motion. Lead the play for Williams. Pretty good shot from Kendall Pope. The 20-yard uh, line. Here again, Tom. 
Paul, as I look at this game and, and the clock winding down, I think back, you know, in 1998, it was Chris Winkie's second start as FSU's quarterback. He threw six interceptions, and FSU lost on Tobacco Road. Here we have Chris Ricks' third start as a Seminole. One INT, two fumbles. Obviously, he's trying to make positive happen, but there's some similarities there, and uh, it's going to come back and bite FSU today on Tobacco Road once again, guys. With ten and a half to play. But the feeling is that it would be a near miraculous finish for Florida State. Curry has thrown one touchdown pass his first of the year. He's got another. a penalty marker it appears that's been thrown and this may be coming back to hold everything holding uh, on the offense that's a 10 yard penalty from the spot we'll replay today if you ever want to show offensive linemen how holding can be devastating this would be the game to play for them how many times have holding calls a erased huge plays or touchdowns touchdown like few games we've ever seen happen today another look at it not sure who it's on nice delivery by curry let's look for number 71 hard to tell jupiter wilson the left tackle Kevin left guard rather sophomore offensive linemen that have more than done their fair share the youngest offensive line in Capitol Hill history erase that score Curry goes back the other way for Aiken who can't come up with it Aiken, Aiken in a duel with Brian McFadden a freshman from Hollywood Florida Mal uh, McFadden getting some playing time because Malcolm Tatum went somewhere over the sidelines in the doghouse Another nice throw by Curry. Fadden with a little hand check there and then strips the ball out of Aiken's hands when he comes in. Of course, maybe it's Tatum that's being uh, hung out for that 53-yard Curry touchdown pass to Bailey. Curry throws here. Nice grab. Three-yard line. Won't count for much by Brandon Russell. Nice pair of hands, though. Very nice pair of hands. Got another flag down. Thrown in the backfield. Happened at the end of the play. Uh, appears to be against Florida State. This is roughing. It's an automatic first down. And roughing the passer it is. Roughing the passer. The penalty will be added to the end of the run. Half the distance to the goal, first down. And Carolina now will have a first down at the Seminole 11-yard line with just over 10 minutes remaining in the football game. Rugged, rugged first appearance in Keenan for Ricks. North Carolina has never beaten Florida State. Bobby Bowden has held mastery over Chapel Hill and the Tar Heel. That may be coming to an end resoundingly this afternoon. Curry on first down. Seminoles having to gamble now, and Williams hits it up against him and scores. solid as this. You know, Keith, it may have to go back to our first year in doing this together when they lost to Miami to open the year in 88 down in the Orange Bowl. 
the last time they were handled like this. Brandon Russell. Williams. Touchdown rumble today. So this will be for John Bunting. His first win at his alma mater against second winning as active coach in all of college football. And Bobby Bowden. You know, with teams with a new staff coming in and especially one coaching in his alma mater. It's the first time that's happened in 50 years here. You're so leery of them because there's going to be a breakout game. Well, and you, you and I were talking about that. Sometimes getting that first win ends up being huge because it gets you over that big hurdle. And certainly Carolina is disappointed in their first three losses, but to open up uh, with a home win of this magnitude will do wonders for the entire program. Kelly Mitch, his reporters started the motion, dropped in the backfield, though. Taking down a good, hard, solid shot. Travis Johnson, not expected today, completed it. The freshman from Sherman Oaks, California. And on the stop of Williams, and that clock rolls. So Bobby Bowden of Florida State, uh, remember the talk with Georgia Tech having to be postponed until December 1st, that that might be the ACC championship game. Have we come to take ACC victories for granted? You won't from this point forward, will you? Because you're going to have to win every game, more likely than not, prior to that Georgia Tech game in December to have a shot at the ACC championship. Well, not only that, Coach Bowden has said for several years now that the only way the ACC is going to improve its respectability rating is for people to start beating Florida State. And we're seeing what may be the, the beginning of the recognition that the ACC uh, it does play a caliber of football that can compete and at least compare favorably with most anyone. Ronald Curry now just arriving at this Carolina huddle. O.J. Jackson helped off the field. The clock starts again. Curry off play action. An open target and Aiken to the one-yard line. Inside the one-yard line. What a phenomenal catch. Guess what, Paul? Another flag. No, don't tell me that. Hey, if you're a Carolina fan, if not for the fact that Tar Heels are leading, this would be horrific at times to look at. Face mask, Florida State. Well, that'll... well then it don't matter. No, it does not. Florida State, that'll be its 15th penalty. Andrews, the indignity of having your defense pushed back to its own goal line with 34 points already on the board, and the football is resting mere inches away from the goal line. They gave it to Andre Williams once and see if they try and get a touchdown for Madison Hedgecott, the fullback. I'll give it to Williams, who is bent back. So there's still some spirit, some heart in that defense. Jarrell Hudson, a big 270-pound linebacker on this stop of 42. Now one of the things that will test this defense, and they've been out there a long time here in the second half, Paul, is whether they will at least put up the resistance and, and make Carolina earn any points that they get down here. They load up the backfield with Russell and Hedgecock in front of Williams. Quarterback sneak, he lunges, and on second effort, Ronald Curry has scored again. 40 on the board for the Tar Heels. of Curry's career being finished obviously so premature including yours and mine oh yeah wipe the egg right off this face it's 40 to 9 he has thrown for a touchdown and scored one himself this will be 34 unanswered points in the second half for North Carolina Reed 
it's a Carolina route on the first home game of the year in Phoenix Stadium. 41 to 9. Tar Heel. Bobby Bowden's Florida State Seminoles. Going to close this out with some class, having been humbled today, 41 to 9. Not since Carl Torbush, his final year, final game a year ago, put 59 on Duke. Have they done this? But scoring as many points, but maybe that that early test of fire, traveling to national champion Oklahoma and to Maryland on the road in the ACC. And then facing the eyes of Texas in Austin, where they lost a few weeks ago, 44 to 14. I mean, they were in each of those games in the second half. Maybe Bunning is the man for this job. Certainly will be the toast of the Tar Heels after this performance. Thorpe downs it in the end zone. Back with the finish in this one. 4-14 remaining in a 41 to 9 affair. John Budding with a data treasure for Tar Heel faithful leading Florida State 41 to 9. That is the largest margin for a Florida State opponent to be dominating the Seminoles Keith in 14 years 1988 31 zip at Miami and I'm not sure I felt worse about that one than I do this one. This is the year of the famous rap video. We are the Seminoles of Florida State. First carry of this game for Eric Sheldon. And the freshman from Lexington, Kentucky takes it to the sideline. Errol Hood is there. Florida State had won 24 straight in Atlantic Coast Conference competition. It was 71 and 2 in the ACC coming into this one. Those two records obviously now changed. The nine time ACC reigning champions will suffer their first loss in school history at the hands of the University of North Carolina. And when you go through at the beginning of the year, you know, folks talk about what is the possibility that Florida State might go nine and two or eight and three. You certainly didn't have Carolina no. as one of the two or three schools that might pull it off. Now with the likes of Miami, Florida, Georgia Tech, Bloomington. McPherson's pump fake fails to free a receiver. Thorpe comes back for the ball, but it corrodes off his chest incomplete. The Knowles will be forced to play third down. You know, and when you get this far down, you know, you've got to begin at least the process number one of rationalization or number two. You're, you're looking asking forward. And and maybe the who and the why. Maybe this is uh, you know what this young ball club needs. I mean, they, they have only been around success. They've not faced adversity. They don't they don't know what it feels like to be whipped soundly. And sometimes it serves as a wake up call. McPherson on third down. AD upstairs over the middle, a sliding effort at the 38 yard line. Whistled incomplete. Javon Walker could not scoop it off the turf. Celebration will start to begin in earnest now with 315 remaining. Off goes Florida State. They call this blue heaven, and what's the old adage? With God's not a tar, he'll wise the sky, Carolina blue. And today, all is right in Chapel Hill. It is a lovely stadium. Pines. Gwaltney with his best punt today. Drives Boz Allen back. He picks it up on the bounce. Fights his way as the break made him out across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Gennaro Jackson, special team two. Primetime Knowles on Sunshine Network this afternoon from Chapel Hill has been brought to you in part by checkers you gotta eat i may, I may not eat tonight <laughs> it's carolina that has been feasting most patriotic and emotional setting today the tar heel marching band again with an american trilogy
They went on their feet. We said at the outset it would be emotional today for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is the imminent crisis. And then Bobby Bowden knew facing uh, John Bunning in his debut, how hard this game would be. And, and the old master has been telling us throughout the summer that this was going to be a difficult, year. difficult year. And Florida State got out, fall, outplayed and out hustled today. And now facing their third quarterback, too, for the Tar Heels, and a freshman in Aaron Leak, who is going to get the play. So Leak is in. The uh, freshman from Durham, North Carolina. Third quarterback following the starter, Ronald Curry, who threw a touchdown pass, scored one himself. A freshman, Darian Duran, who hurled a couple of touchdown passes against Florida State. And now the first varsity action for Leak this year. The twos and the threes are getting a chance to play against Florida State along that offensive line and credit that young front for North Carolina, not only keeping them in the game in the first half, but in the second half, so thoroughly dominating Florida State that the Knolls were outscored 34 to nothing in the final two quarters. And, and we may very well have witnessed, you know, the coming together of that offensive line. You see Chaplain Clint Purvis there on the sidelines consoling Jay Jackson. It's a, football is a very funny game. If you've been around it long enough, you'll, you'll think you've seen it all, and then all of a sudden it'll surprise you again. That's Isaiah Robinson. Out wide for Carolina. And Lee. Looking his way, and he's open. Across midfield and down to the 40, the 39-yard line. Run of Claudius Ose. So Leak comes in and takes it to Florida State. Gate on the play of 22. Well, as we talked about, if you go back to that 97 matchup that we highlighted here, Tommy talked about, you know, 41 kids that played in that game went on to play in the NFL or are currently playing in the NFL. There was never any question about Carolina's talent level. You and I were talking about that yesterday afternoon. They've got the kids. They just weren't playing well. Now they appear to have the staff, the chemistry, the unity to be successful. They have to ask no less than Florida State. One of those newer offensive linemen with motion prior to the snap for Carolina. That's Chase Page, a freshman guard. His first game in the stadium, number 68. He rocked early. Over Florida State, they uh, pick up what they can next week against Wake Forest. That'll be a pay-per-view game on Sunshine Network. Full start, offense, five-yard penalty. That's defensive coordinator John Tanuta arrived here from Ohio State. <laughs> Getting a uh, raucous greeting at the sideline. For Wake Forest, Terrence Williams may come in there with Wake undefeated. He's rushed for 100 yards in the first two games this year for Jim Grove and the Demon Deacons. Burning time off that clock. Running away is Jock Lewis. Trying to keep that clock moving. A half a minute to go. That may be the, you know, the clock is stopped here. A flag is down, so Carolina's going to have to run another play. But the celebration, like Carolina perhaps has never seen, their first victory in history over a top five school and putting it in the Florida State's run of 24 consecutive Atlantic Coast Conference triumphs in Bunning's debut. The fans begin to come on to the field toward the north end zone. Toward the goal line. The men in blue trying to keep them away. It's going to be hard to keep that student section. Trust me. The men in blue are outnumbered by the other men and women in blue. I give Carolina a wealth of credit. Keith, we have broadcast so many Florida State All wins. Weeks. On the offense. All-Americans, Heisman Trophy winners, Lombardi Award winners, Thorpe winners. We have seen the glory days. And now times of trial in the ACC for Florida State Lumen. As they have been embarrassed today, 41-9. to nine. And freshman Aaron Link will take it on one knee. And Florida State for the moment has seen its run 
come to an end. John Bunning in his return to his alma mater. As a day he'll forever treasure. For only the third time in a decade, Florida State has lost to an Atlantic Coast Conference fall. 41 to 9 at the hands of the North Carolina Tar Heels. It's the first time in history that North Carolina has beaten FSU. And if you go back and, and start the process of the what ifs and the how comes, Paul, I think you've got to go back to the fact that Florida State came out lifeless, did not play well. Because we were used to that, Florida State not getting off the fast starts in the previous two games, maybe not cognizant of the fact that this was a team that, that for all intents and purposes, weren't here today. They did not play and give all the credit to Carolina. Well, coming out of that mass, having shaken the hand of John Bunning, Bobby Bowden now joining our own Tom Block down on the field. Tom? It's been a long time since the Florida State team was handled like this North Carolina team did you today. Did you get a sense that your team, when they came out lifeless, they just weren't ready to play today? It looked like it, but you got to hand it. Well, they, were, they wanted it a lot better we do. We can't turn the ball over that many times and beat anybody. It's no different in 1998 when NC State beat us. Did your youth and inexperience and injuries just catch up to you maybe sooner than, than folks expected it would this year? Well, we made a lot of mistakes. Fumbles, fumbles, interceptions, and penalties. But they deserve two things. They deserve to win it. We deserve to lose it. In spite of all the mistakes you're talking about, at the half, you still had the lead. There was a point there. Javon Walker had a long touchdown called back by a penalty. Maybe that typified the way the afternoon went because from there, it was just all Carolina and you couldn't stop their express. Well, we made a couple of plays during the game and fumbled. Then we make that long touchdown and penalty. So they had them too. You, you pulled Chris Ricks and went to Adrian McPherson. Ricks hadn't really played all that badly. Was that just trying to find a spark or is there a debate there? Well, I would like to have left him in there, but we were, we were turning the ball over and uh, we, we need to see if, if something could spark us. All right, Coach, wait for us next week. Get back to the drawing board. Thank you, buddy. Right. Paul Keith, back upstairs. Tom, it is easy to face the microphones when you have won. It is a far different proposition when you have been embarrassed. And, and Coach Bowden is gracious on either end. The celebration, unmatched perhaps in the history of Tar Heel football, and as Bowden would tell you, so richly deserved. A dominating win today for North Carolina at the expense of the reigning champions of the ACC in Florida State. 41-9 to today in Canaan.